Well, hey guys, uh, welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor. It's a special edition, episode 31. I'm actually down here in Toronto, downtown, at the Canadian International Auto Show for 2019. I'm excited to be down here. A couple of stories I want to just talk about quickly before we uh, hit the show floor and uh, get things going. So, uh, first of all, there's an article that came out that referenced uh, Kelly Blue Book, uh, a renowned automotive uh, site, of course, for valuations of vehicles and reviews and all that good stuff. Now, uh, KBB, as they're called, uh, just came out with an announcement that they awarded the Nissan LEAF, the 2019 Nissan LEAF, this is the 40 kilowatt hour version of the LEAF, as the best uh, in five year total ownership cost. And so you have to remember, folks, this has nothing to do with range, uh, price point, uh, accessories, all that kind of good stuff. It's a combination of purchase price with operating costs over five years and then evaluation of what that car is going to be worth five years later, taking all that into account. So uh, KBB says that it's the second, actually this is the second year that the LEAF has won this award from Kelly Blue Books consecutive for the uh, EV of uh, the lowest costs. Um, and it's estimated that it's five year cost to come in at th just over $35,000. This is a US number, of course, as, uh, as Kelly Bo uh, KBB is a US company. So what that means is you take the purchase price, you amortize that over five years to some sort of valuation of what the uh, fair market resale would be of the vehicle at the time, add in all your operating costs, which include your charging, which include your maintenance costs, uh, anything else from that perspective, insurance, uh, and all that good stuff, and you come up with uh, this number. So they don't give a detailed breakdown on how they came up with the number. And second place was the 2019 Kia Soul with uh, just a little bit more than $35,000, a few hundred dollars more, followed by the Chevrolet Bolt, the 2019 version of the Bolt, at uh, about $38,000. Uh, so okay, you know your your opinions are going to vary, but just to give you know, uh, it, it's nice to see that the industry recognizes uh, electric vehicles and the the lower operating costs that they bring, and being able to put some figures around that. So the other big news I want to talk about before we hit the show floor is um, an announcement that came out a couple of days ago that really surprised a lot of people, and of course it's got to do with Rivian, our favorite uh, SUV and pickup truck provider that's looking to come out to the market with some fantastic vehicles. Well, they've come up with a couple of articles. The first big one is that they're in talks with Amazon and GM for potential partnerships. Uh, now this could be a huge investment deal for these organizations. We're talking about um, in excess of one billion dollars US uh, or 775 million British pounds if you're into that side of the pond um, and two million dollars, two billion dollars as well. So we're looking at GM and Amazon contributing uh, over three billion dollars by the looks of it or about that money into Rivian as some sort of partnership. Uh, I don't think it's a buyout from what I've read. It's more of an investment that they would most likely become owners and partners in this company as Rivian looks to take the SUV and the pickup truck to market in the next few years. Um, now obviously GM is no stranger to pickup trucks. They're one of the, the class leaders as well with Ford and uh, Chrysler following, uh, or Ford being the leader and then GM and the Chrysler. They just haven't announced really any electrification plans for the pickup side of things, or really a lot of electrification, unfortunately, uh, since they've got rid of the Volt. So this could be a really good move if GM decides to do this, um, and it could really help speed up development and production of not only GM's uh, uh, electrification of what they want to do, they can utilize technology from Rivian and so forth, uh, but also um, help get their namesake out there with, in partnership with Rivian. Now, Amazon, uh, that's really no surprise. Amazon's diversing their business portfolio. They got, you know, they picked up a grocery, they picked up Whole Foods, and they're doing all kinds of things other than, you know, buying iPads and stuff over uh, over Amazon and parts and things like that. So they're really diversifying their business line, and this could be really good for Rivian because you've got this huge sales and marketing machine that is Amazon. Uh, you've got obviously their online presence dominance. You've got a well-known platform that everybody knows and is used to Amazon. Online ordering of cars is not far-fetched. Uh, Tesla started that and everybody's picking up on that. So it's certainly something that can happen. And they have a multitude of physical locations which could become, and employees, which could help to back up Rivian's distribution side of things. Um, not only getting cars out of production line, but getting them into distribution centers for distribution out to different fields, uh, locations. And p potentially maybe backing this up with some sort of service element. Because as I mentioned in the uh, previous article about the LEAF, uh, having a dealer network or having a serviceability is key for long-term support of your model line. 
Uh, so I think this is a great, fantastic move for Rivian. It's probably a dream come true if this will happen. Now, Rivian's already well-funded. You know, they're one of the, what makes them special is that they not only have come up with some really, really good pre-production prototypes, and these are, as I've mentioned a few times, and, and reviewers have mentioned, are really close to production looking cars. Uh, but they have a substantial financial backing, I think in excess of two to three hundred million, if I'm not mistaken, possibly more. So they weren't really in, 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 in trouble from a monetary perspective, but these this kind of multi-billion dollar uh, investment in cash flow and, and into Rivian can help not only speed up their time to production, hopefully, for the current models, but also help develop them into future um, electric vehicles as well. And of course, we all know through Tesla's experience in watching them that it takes money to build cars. You, it takes a time and a lot of money, not just a little bit of money. So uh, this could really, really boost Rivian and kind of just give them what they need a lot sooner. Uh, now GM was uh, was reached out by this from this article. Uh, Reuters actually uh, talked to them and they reached out for comment and all GM said was that we admire Rivian's contribution to a future of zero emissions and an all electric future. Uh, so they didn't really kind of say anything but for them to say to not disclaim it means that there's potentially some talking going on. So stay Stay watching your screens for that because that could be huge news. And you know what that means is that it can really help back up Rivian's sales expectations. So they've actually come out and, and in contrary to what most other manufacturers do, they've come out and said, this is what we want to produce. This is what our goal is for production, which is great because now it can give everybody some basis of income for the organization, timelines and all that kind of good information. So what kind of sales production are they anticipating for both their truck and SUV? Um, so their CEO, uh, Mr. Skerringe, uh, laid out a, a combined numbers for both of those vehicles. And I quote, this is from a Forbes article. He says, the pickup will have a base price of 68,000 US and the SUV of 72.5, those are really strong numbers. And they will both be applicable for tax incentives as well, both federal if, if it's still going and, and, for, and state and local ta uh, tax incentives that are offered depending on where you buy this, these vehicles. Now Rivian won't share their pre-order figures. We know they've opened the, uh, the lines for pre-order a, a couple of months ago already, but we can guess that it's probably doing quite well. Uh, but the company expects to deliver 20,000 units and that's combined truck and SUV in 2021. So only about a year and a half or two years from now and then 40,000 the next year. So they're going to double production in a year once they, once they get the kinks laid out, worked out. So which translates, if you look at revenue, that's about 1.4 billion and 2.8 billion respectively by sales. Uh, now in comparison, you know, Tesla sold 22,000 units of the Model S when it first announced and 25,000 of the Model X when it debuted. And again, these were pricey vehicles uh, in that price range, if not even higher. Uh, so it's certainly, uh, these numbers seem very, reasonable, very doable for Rivian if they can produce them and if they're looking to get, as I mentioned, this kind of financial backing, uh, I think the demand is going to far outweigh the supply for those guys and that's a good problem to have for a time, for a certain time being. Uh, so keep your eye on Rivian. I don't, I don't think they're here at the Toronto International or Canadian International Auto Show here in Toronto. I don't think Rivian is here. Uh, I, I haven't walked the floor yet. We just got here and I wanted to open the show. Uh, so now it's time. I'm going to go walk the floor and see some announcements. This um, announcement's coming from VW and some other uh, manufacturers. So let's see what we can get uh, from these guys and hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Peak world record holder, the IDR. A seat. The future of our automobile will be electric. 
because we have a responsibility towards our planet and also more and more of our customers are demanding it. We built this race car to take it on the Pikes Peak hill climb and show that an electric vehicle could do anything a gasoline powered car can do. And so it did. The IDR not only set the electric record, it also shattered the overall record proving that electric cars are for real. This summer, we're taking this baby to the Nürburgring in Germany and to see what we can do there with the record. I, I would not bet against us. So racing is fun, but for us, it's more than just that. By pushing our technology to the limit, we can develop electric cars for our customers that are based upon proven technology and are capable of doing all the things Canadians need. In short, they're real. Within the next two years, Volkswagen will begin delivering the next generation of electric vehicles to the Canadian market. Let's take a sneak peek. Ladies and gentlemen, the ID Cross concept. Isn't it beautiful? The ID Cross concept will give you a good idea of the future looks like at Volkswagen. Based upon our all electric MEB platform, the ID Cross promises all the power and performance Canadians want. And along with the next generation of connectivity, space, and go anywhere capability, this is the car you want to have. Worried about range? The Cross will feature scalable battery packs so that will allow customers to pick the range that suits their needs. In short, the ID Cross will be a real car for real Canadians. Volkswagen is an electric game for real, as you can see. And soon, you will be able to buy one. We are going all in, because we want to build electric vehicles for the millions, and not just the millionaires. We will build them in North America too. And we recently just announced plans for a $1 billion investment in a factory for this very purpose. Last year, the Volkswagen Group announced the formation of Electrify Canada. This company was founded to set up a cross-country network of charging stations to help all electric car drivers regardless of what brand you're driving. And you can see the station here. Worldwide, Volkswagen is systematically advancing its electromobility offensive. So we can become the automaker that takes the electric car out of its niche and introduces it to the mass market. We recognize that the car of the future will not just be powered by electricity, it will also be digitally connected and will increasingly drive itself. I am very excited about our future, and I'm convinced you will be as well. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of great news. I thank you so much for your attention, and now I invite you to take a closer look. Right guys, I'm here in Toronto at the Canadian International Auto Show at the VW booth. They just unveiled the ID Cross. Beautiful looking vehicle. I've only seen pictures of it and, and of course video that's down here. And I'm here with Thomas. He's the top gun. How are you, Thomas? Hey, he's Canada really good. the top gun in VW Canada. I like Don't to think so. anybody else fool you that he's, let's say he's not. So uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. So uh, this is exciting. I mean, you know, you guys have been coming out with a lot of product, a lot of announcements in the industry. Um, I talked to, I was down in Detroit a few weeks ago and I talked to, I believe it was uh, Matthew who uh, is part of the, the USA team, Absolutely. and he was talking about some of the growth. What can you share with us from a Canadian uh, viewpoint on uh, where Volkswagen is going with electrification? Well, if I can use a poker analogy, Ken, we are going all in on this one. Mm -hmm. The future is electric, and that's the fact. And whether the future comes in six weeks or six months or six years, we're not sure. It's going to depend on consumers because ultimately the people that write their name on a check, they decide when things are coming. But we want to be ready for this. We don't want to be the last ones to the party. So we've already made great inroads. As you know, we've got an e-golf, which is yep. available in Canada. Great car. A great car. We can't get enough of them. I was going to say. <laughs> we can't get <laughs> enough of them. Get. Yeah. Even though we're getting three times as many yeah. this year as we got last oh, year, we okay. still can't get enough. Mm -hmm. And that's 
good news. Mm -hmm. Like these are the early adopters, the yeah. people that are really excited. So that's already given us a little bit of a, a sort of a leg up to know that yes, there are people out there that, that want this kind of technology, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the volumes are kind of small. Right. Having said that, in Wolfsburg where the decisions are made, we have decided that electrification is the way we are going. Mm -hmm. So much so that if you have a look, and I'm sure you've got some video of this mm -hmm. beautiful car, the IDR, that's the yeah. car we took to Pikes Peak last year. Yeah. We Amazing. took that to show that electric cars can do anything that gasoline-powered cars can. If, if not better. If anyway. not better. Yeah. So we went there and we thought, yeah. we're gonna set a new electric car record going mm -hmm. up this international hill climb. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, eight minutes later or more specifically seven minutes and 57 seconds later wow. not only did we have a new electric record but we had a new overall record wow impressive we're going to yeah. take this thing to the nurburgring later this year and nice. see if we can change some record books there as well yeah i'm curious to see how that's going to do but that's just a that's just the start. That's yeah. just to showcase the technology. We're learning so much from this car about charge rates, about discharge, about performance in different temperatures on different surfaces and such. And we're taking that data and we're putting it into our database, our brain trust, if yeah. you will. And we've come up with, or along the way, where we've come up with a platform that we call MEB. Yep. And the ID Cross you see behind us is one of the first cars that will come off this new MEB platform. Now, I talked a lot about the MEB platform, got a lot of good pictures, and, and the last few shows, Thomas, I've really been talking a lot about VW. I think some of my fans are getting sick of it, but I mean, <laughs> I'm, it's, not. It's, I'm not either because you guys are really moving and shaking the industry. You know, Tesla's awakened it, I think, maybe the sleeping giant. 100%. If you want to use that analogy 100%. with the Model 3 and, and kind of, you know, fireworking that but everybody's getting into the game and, and what I tell folks is you know you guys are spending some serious money 48 billion in, in you know battery contracts for the next several years you know you want to build a, a million cars a year mm -hmm. you know by a, in a not too distant future I mean, right. these are some really staggering numbers and if anybody's got the might to do it it's you guys well and let's not forget we've just dedicated a mil a bill a million a billion dollars mm -hmm. to enhancing our factory presence in Chattanooga Tennessee mm -hmm. we are going to build MEB yeah, cars there because yeah. if we're going to build like you say a million a year we can't do it in one factory yeah. you know we've got two three factories in Germany that are being retooled mm -hmm. right now to start producing these cars Cars. Yeah. We're going to start seeing them on the road in as little as 18 months time, 24 that, yeah. months in Canada. Okay. So this is happening. This is not yep. something that's pie in the sky that's coming right. way down the road. This is near and it's exciting and we think, we really think that Canadians are going to love it and we're yeah. going to reach that point of critical mass where mm -hmm. that stone really gathers speed uh -huh. and once there's enough of them out there, once there's enough people that are driving these cars, the word is going to get out that they're believable that they yep. work, that you can drive them to work every day, they can use it as a single car in a yep. family. We know we're gonna get there, and as you mentioned, we're spending an awful lot of money, so my pension Absolutely. depends on this working, so you know, you know where I'm on. I like that believable aspect because it is, it really is, it's an educational uh, awareness that you have to bring to people to say, what, you mean I can actually drive an EV through a car wash, get to get out in the rain? I mean, will it get me to work and back? That range anxiety yep. is, it, I call it more, it's more bladder anxiety now on these long trips. Sure it's not so much range anymore. Yep. Uh, and you guys are really filling that, uh, that uh, EV market void with some really good products. Now, what's coming out first then in that 2021 uh, calendar year time frame? First car you see in North yeah. America is going to yeah. be exactly what you're it's looking at be behind cross. you. Okay. Now, we call it the ID Cross yep. internally. Mm -hmm. Whether or not that ends up being the the actual name that we put on the tailgate sure. of the vehicle, yep. we'll see. But okay. this is what the vehicle is going to look like. I'm okay. sure we're going to make a few little adjustments yeah, to it. Yeah, side mirrors here. Yeah, you know, that we kind probably of stuff. won't yep. have sliding doors in the back right. there. It looks cool in the it show car, cool. but I don't know if that's going to work its way to production. Uh, no. But fundamentally, okay. this is what you're going to see. Okay. And the technology is, it's so close. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, we couldn't be more excited by it. Excellent, excellent. And I know you're going to have with multiple battery choice options. That is uh, correct. So different flavors at different price points. Yep. Do you have any idea where you see an entry price point for this yet? Any speculation? It's what going to be, be right now. We mm -hmm. have the range of somewhere between zero yeah. and a million. Okay. And and uh, the closer to Good zero, answer. the better. Are you running for politics, my friend? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'll tell you, yeah. we've got a pencil sharpener yeah. at our head offices Good. in Ajax, and we are sharpening those pencils every day. Because at the end of the day, we know we can bring the best technology. Yep. We can have the most exciting new thing that anyone's ever seen mm -hmm. but if we don't sell any it's good for nothing that's right so the price has to be right and we can't rely on subsidies we can't rely well, we don't have any here in ontario exactly right now, those are so, gone yeah, yeah. so we need to make this thing viable i promise you it will be viable excellent and lastly i've talked a lot about vw's efforts of the electrification from a charging perspective with electrify america and electrify canada 
aspects that are going on. Um, can you tell us some time frames on when we should start seeing some Canadian rollout of those Yes, chargers? indeed. We should start seeing, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. the, the, the first phase of our Electrify Canada initiative rolling out towards the end of Q2 this year. Okay. So right around mm -hmm. the middle of the year, we'll start right. seeing the first charging Just in time for summer stations. vacation traveling. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, as with our electric vehicle development, mm -hmm. we're all in on Electrify Canada. We need to show Canadians that there are places to charge cars. And let's not forget, we estimate 70% of the charging is going to get done at home anyways, yes. but that leaves 30%. Yeah. So we want to make sure that Canadians know that if they drive an electric car, whether it's a Volkswagen or somebody else's, mm -hmm. you'll be mm -hmm. able to charge it. And Electrify Canada is there to fulfill that mission. Excellent. And these are going to be uh, 150 kilowatt chargers? 150 start, and, 350. and 350. But okay. they'll also be able to, yeah. to charge down as low as 50. So okay. everybody that's on the road right now, well, everybody, I don't know about golf yep. carts and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but by and large, if yep. you drive an EV, yep. you'll be able to pull into an Electrify Canada station and give yourself a fill. Excellent. And any idea of cost structure or pricing structure Not around that? Not a clue. Not a clue yet? Okay. I tried, folks. I'm fishing here. <laughs> No, that's great. Uh, we're really excited about VW and uh, what you guys are bringing to the EV game. We look forward to seeing a lot more. Thanks, As Thomas. As do we. We're excited to be time. bringing it. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Ken. All right. Take care. Well, hey, guys. Just stepping, uh, stopping by the Hyundai Kona to look at, have a quick look at that since they have one out. It's been named the uh, Kona itself. The model line has been named the 2019 Utility Vehicle of the Year. I think that's a North American de designation because I remember seeing something in uh, Detroit about that. Uh, not necessarily the Kona EV, but the Kona line. And obviously it's got the, the more compact uh, CUV, SUV sizing, as you can see with relative to myself. Um, you know, Hyundai's come a long way in build quality. They're really, really solidly built cars, um, really good value propositions as well. You guys know that my pick of the year is actually the sister, a little bit cousin, uh, sibling to this, which is the Kona Nero EV, only because it's a bigger size, a little bit more uh, different, uh, nicer appointments, and I think it just hits a bigger sweet spot, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with the Kona. It's a great car. The only issue is going to be availability, obviously, on these vehicles, uh, not just in North America from a global perspective, because we know that people are going to want them, but, you know, just taking a quick look at it, uh, really nice appointments in it. Yeah, it's all right. 